athletes uh, before the injury, after injury, how they how they treat, and and we try to implement preventive programs to 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 these high level athletes because if they get injured, so uh, the team loses the player and they're not able to help uh the national team to to participate so it, it is really important and what every day we're feeling uh, that we feel the pressure from the from the coaches and 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 all community that we are responsible that they would keep help so prevention for me being as orthopedic surgeon is is, is also really really important okay and uh, about the shoulder injuries Unfortunately, they are also quite uh, often happening uh, like a knee. And uh, okay, this is tennis congress and tennis dedicated uh, uh, congress. And, and, and what, okay, if, if the people, uh, the sports, when the people using overhead movements, yeah, the overhead, it, it means this like of movements. The, the tennis players uh, hit a lot and using the rotation a lot. So uh, when this is, uh, this is uh, too much, so this is maybe a problem and I will try to, to show what kind of problems they have usually. And okay, the surf is also really complicated movement and uh, many tendons involved in, in that and, and almost all body involved in that. What is important uh, in overhead athletes that external internal rotation and usually when, the, when we have internal rotation, okay, we, we go with racket in internal rotation, this is much more stronger compared to external rotation. And, and if we have imbalance of between external and internal rotation, this is maybe a problem. So uh, the athlete should keep in mind this, this rotational movements. I will jump a little bit just to remind uh, which tendons are responsible for rotating your shoulder. This is subscapularis, it's here, so internal rotator, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, in external rotators. And this is most uh, small rotators of the, of the shoulder, of the shoulder responsible that your shoulder, your humerus will, will act in, in high speed and, and, and if something goes wrong, then you, uh, the athletes can have the problems. And the problems are usually when here we see the rotator cuff tear, we see the biceps tendon and, and the humerus get and rotator cuff. What is surprisingly for me that I know tennis players and athletes still continue the career with rotator cuff tear, more or less rotator cuff tear. So physiotherapy and, and anything without surgery is, is really powerful tool, can fix it for a couple of, of time. Uh, the sh shoulder injury we already had from yesterday that mostly is overuse problem. So this is depends of the, of the type of acromion. If we have type three acromion, so the narrow, sp narrow space where the uh, rotators rotator cuff, so-called rotator cuff, act especially in the in abduction, in overhead motion, and if you have this narrow space, so it may damage the rotator cuff. And this is uh, the big problem for the overhead athletes. They usually complain of pain in the shoulder, and just because they have type three acromion in the shoulder. Another problem, if there is limit of internal rotation, especially in overhead athletes, when they hit the ball, and, and if you have limit of internal rotation during your force, you exceed this limit and you can damage your shoulder. So this is important to have the correct range of movement and these overhead athletes are especially sensitive to that. Uh, I'm doing cartoscopic surgeries and 
uh, out of them I learned a lot about the biomechanics of, of the shoulder in, in the overhead. What is important, here we see rotator cuff, here the humerus head, and here the biceps, long biceps. And when this movement goes in abduction and external rotation, and if this, this movement is in the forced, so what's happening? Uh, the rotator cuff during the movement uh, compresses the, the long head of the biceps, between which goes between the subscapularis and, and supraspinatus, and it always, the biceps is under, under the tension. And if something cro goes in the wrong way, uh, you may damage both the rotator cuff and both the biceps. So range of motion is, is really, really important for, for the overhead athletes. The shoulder is not only the shoulder, it's a complex. You should, of course, you, you are looking uh, in all, all complex. What is important, that this is not only glenohumeral joint, this is, not on, this is also a chromoclavicular joint, scapular thoracic joint, and scapular uh, clavicular to thoracic joint. So everything is important. All everything is important, and, and if you just focus on the, on the shoulder for getting scapula and other, other this is also is, is, is really important. Uh, there are some exceptions. If you get some okay patients with hyperlaxity, uh, overhead athletes, they have a little bit different shoulder. In the dominant hand, they have extra external rotation and they are hyperlax. So they have a little bit higher risk to, to, to injury. Here we see the lady with, uh, she's able to dislocate the sternal part of the clavicular without pain, just she does it and she relocate. Here we see the hyperlux, he can turn his, so these athletes are a little bit different. And what we see in our head, I see a lot, we had a, a little bit yesterday, the, the scapula is, is also can go differently and hyperlux is a little bit also a problem. The main two problems in our head, what I see, as I already showed you, the biceps, here we see the biceps and the rotator cuff. So because of, of, of very difficult motions, I do not understand these motions. Though so this is really difficult, a lot of ligaments. And in our head, the, bi the biceps has a st stress under the rotator cuff and here we we call slap lesions. The biceps may tear in in in, in attachment place, and uh, together the rotator cuff may tear because they are so close. The biceps and and, and the supraspinatus are so close, and usually in the overhead rotation, there is so, so called internal impingement, and and it may damage. And I see a lot of these injuries in overhead athletes. What could be? Could be partial tears, uh, articular part, bursal part, or, or middle part. This is, could be corrected and, and are corrected simply, corrected simply with physiotherapy. And uh, this is, uh, the, the program, the Limonas uh, sent me this uh, video. Uh, we are working with our national team, and and they are the beginning. Okay, when we started 12 years ago, if we would suggest to do them this, they would never do. They would look at, at us like a stupid. But now, uh, after they get injured, they understand that this is really important. So. Uh, Half of the of the players already had some part of the surgeries, and but healthy ones, younger ones, they follow the 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 elder athletes, and and now we are happy they follow all prevention program we we suggest to them. So if we if we have partial tear, 
of the rotator cuff, we can correct this, no need to do the surgery. The different situation if we have complete tear, are they, are they I know some athletes, they are able to, to continue the career with a small tear, but if we have a massive retracted tear, so in these situations, of course, it's difficult to, to help without the surgery, so, but fortunately, this is a small amount of the, of the, of the all sh shoulder injuries, we do the surgery, about 10, 20 per percent, we have this with type. And it depends of many factors I mentioned. I, I, I think that in overhead, this is important, the, the type of acromion. Uh, where the, this rotator cuff goes, and, and of course, these are mostly degenerative tears. What is important in the clinical practice for myself and, and to, to make a plan if we have the shoulder pain to, to find out the problem. Is it tendinitis or is it tear? So we do resistant tests, so we repeat the motion of the tendon, does normally and we resist it. If the athlete feels the pain, so we suspect tendinitis or the small tear or larger tear, then we do injection in that part and if the pain goes out, then we are sure that this is maybe tendinitis and if they are able to resist, then maybe this is not a tear. Then, of course, the more dedicated test, MRI, ultrasound ca can help. If, if we are not able to have these tools, uh, of course, there are many good diagnostic uh, tools can, can, can have an idea of which tendon is involved. Is it, is it uh, for example, infraspinatus, where the external rotator, we just resist external rotation and, and, and we compare both hands. If we, if we feel the, the difference, then we do the more dedicated test. I go through this test because this is, uh, of course, uh, well written in the literature and, and I hope you use them, them and this is not an issue. Uh, the main problem, how to avoid and what to do that not to get it, but if you get what to do. Uh, if you have a partial tear, uh, the main, the f first goal is to, to do, of course, uh, physiotherapy. It is efficient in, in 80% of the athlete. In, in other situations, we considering, of course, uh, to take out the acromion, and to do not type three, but to do type one, yeah? Because type three is when, when you go in overhead, your, your tendons go under the acromion, and with time, you can tear them. So if nothing helpful, we do just simple endoscopic procedure, and with the bar, we take the, the acromion, and then the tendons are free. But this is quite a rare situation. If we have, uh, full thickness tear a little bit larger, and if we have uh, biceps instability, so-called slap tear, we have to fix, because the athlete is not able to continue his career. This is already not prevention, I'm sorry, but uh, just I learned from my surgeries what, what we have to look for. So here the tendon biceps is loose, and here, here the tendon is fixed, and, and then these athletes may, may return to, to previous activity level. If we have rotator cuff tear, also we have to fix it because this is not possible to be professional without the tendons. And sometimes uh, the lesions are really big, we have to implant, and, and the cost for the surgery is really high. We saw the numbers. Uh, shown by, by Joseph, and, and of course this is, this is really expensive, better to avoid, and this is possible to avoid. Uh, being a surgeon, I do not know how to do it. I know how to do it, but, but it is difficult to do. Uh, usually what I noted that athletes being young and, and healthy, 
they do not pay attention to that. We spent a lot talking to them that you should follow prevention to avoid this and this. They told, no, I am strong, I am young, I will never get it. And after five years, they get it, then they understand, but sometimes it is too late if they get, if they get, uh, if they get already fatty degeneration. And okay, if here the rotators, MRI, and if the rotators uh, not fatty degenerated, damage you can help. Uh, if, if we have no fatty degeneration, we can help without surgery. But if there is tear and, 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 and fatty degeneration, then it is not possible even to fix the tendons with, with the surgery. You have to do other difficult procedures uh, because uh, they get so-called pseudo-paralytic pseudo shoulder. Uh, the nerves are okay, but the muscles are atrophic and they're not able to rotate even to, to, to keep the, to take the spoon and to, to, to lift, not talking about the uh, sports. So in, in that situation, we have to, to transfer latissimus dorsi. This is difficult and they never back to sport. But what is surprising for me, even I see that uh, some of the uh, my friends playing tennis, being in age, okay, between 40 and 50, they even try to play tennis without the two tendons, with the pain, and and uh, then they get arthritis, and and sometimes uh, the they need uh, later on the the big big surgery, but some of them keep playing tennis without two tendons. I don't know how it's possible, but I know them. Uh, another problem with the shoulder is the instability. Uh, here we see the humerus head going out of the glenoid of the shoulder and wearing of the bone uh, because the humerus should stay in, 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 your, in your shoulder. And this is a really, really dynamic joint, the most elastic joint and depending on the tendons, and we see more and more shoulder instability, especially in the young athletes. And if they get this situation, they, of course, are not able to, to do overhead activities. Of course, if they have dislocation, first time dislocation, it depends on the, on the, on the damage of the shoulder, what to do, there are many discussions what to do after first time dislocation. Should they go to the su surgery or is it enough to do physiotherapy to, to, increase, uh, to increase the strength and neuromuscular con control and to avoid the surgery? But the evidence is also a powerful tool. If, uh, okay, if you get in st unstable shoulder, it is the risk that in 20 years you will get arthritis and, and total shoulder. This is also almost the same like with, with the knee. So if you do not do the operation of the unstable shoulder, shoulder uh, or you do it quite late, anyway, you, you will have some kind of surgery in, in, in type. And uh, if, you, if you wait a little bit with substantial instability, you may have not one operation. I will show you, but more operations, and it, this will be difficult in some situations. Uh, despite the literature that uh, after first time dislocation, maybe the surgery is not the option. Okay, I'm a surgeon. I think that this is wrong opinion. If you get injured something, put it back and the risk, apply the prevention program and the risk will be less than you will continue with, with some tear of the labrum. So after first time dislocation, I think you should considering to fix what is torn and to continue with, with, with prevention, secondary prevention. And I think this is, uh, will be less risk to develop osteoarthritis in the future. But in some situations, if you have chronic shoulder instability, uh, the real life, what I heard from Joseph, that 
uh, in the lab you have one situation, in the real life you have another situation. Uh, uh, it, it was good to hear for me that I'm sorry that you got ACL tears. Uh, talking ab about the shoulder, I had three dislocations myself of the right shoulder playing basketball and one dislocation of the left one, left one, but no surgery. I'm afraid about that. I know my future, <laughs> I know. But so the most uh, athletes and patients doing the same pl like I do. They never go to the physician or anyone after first time dislocation but they already go to physician when they get 7, 10, 20 dislocations. Then they have chronic instability. I have already chronic instability. So what does it mean? It means that they have bony defects in the glenoid and humerus. This is example, good example, just on track and off track. It's the same like car goes out of the hill the humerus head goes out of the glenoid if there is substantial bony defect. If the bony defect is, sm is small, the car doesn't go out of the hill and the humerus head doesn't go out of, of the glenoid. So chronic instability is something like that. So this is not possible to help uh, these people with simple surgery. And of course, it is quite difficult to continue some sports with this type of off track. I have on track chronic shoulder, so if I if I take care about myself, I am able. If not, this is quite difficult. Hyperlaxity also is really really difficult situation. It's really interesting picture. Uh, what do you think? This is back or 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 front? Front. Yes, you're right. So, and, and in hyperlaxity, the shoulder is, is really loose, is really loose. And if it's not painful, it's just better to leave. I will show you later on some examples of the patients. We are surgeons, we do mistakes. I do mistakes, in, in, and, and this is quite difficult. We are not the gods. We just try to help, but sometimes no evidence. You should find the solution in, in OP at the moment, and sometimes it's difficult when there are no data. So we get this unstable shoulders, and we have to help if this is chronic. So no more soft tissue, and not possible to help these patients to fix their shoulder that they would have stable shoulder. In that situation, the only way just I tell to, to, to rehabilitation team and to physiotherapist, and we, we do seminars also, and I want to, they know that there are a couple of situations because only soft tissue, what, what I see the, the my colleagues maybe uh, doing too much soft tissue reconstruction, they're not helpful if, if we have uh, chronic shoulder instability. The only way is to, to transfer some bone and then to do some so-called laterally procedure and to fix that, uh, to increase the volume of the, of the, of the, hum of the glenoid that the humerus get wouldn't jump out of, of the joint. Okay, this is about instability. Another problem in overhead is neurologic problem. Uh, okay, a couple years ago we were not able to see, we overlooked these problems. Yesterday I asked our anesthesiologist, they and uh, pain medicine specialists, they, are, they get these patients, I think, uh, they see these patients and do some block, and this is really good, but, but suprascapular nerve is involved, goes uh, in, in the groove, and really have the stress when you do overhead motion. And sometimes uh, the athletes tell that I have a pain in, in the shoulder, but they do not point where they have the pain. Here, 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 here. And suprascapular nerve is 
quite often involved in the pathology of the shoulder. This is quite difficult to do right diagnosis, but this is really important. Uh, the symptom is atrophy of the infraspinatus of the rotators because it goes into infraspinatus muscle and, and of course MRI can show electron neuromyography. I don't know, it's, it's quite complicated. And uh, these athletes usually have smaller or, or bigger problems with, with suprascapular nerve. And uh, they may have a pain in the shoulder, which is mixed with, with, a, with a nerve entrapment, and the atrophy in the infraspinatus and, and, and supraspinatus. What is interesting, what I learned from my surgeries, uh, because sometimes we have to release this ligament because the nerve goes into the groove, and what, what I found, and I found in the literature, sometimes there are some types of the groove where the nerve goes. Just imagine if the nerve goes in this type of groove, and sometimes, and the ligament goes in the, in the above the, the nerve. Sometimes I was not able to find the ligament. It was a bone, so it was a hole, bony hole, so the nerve was compressed and, and was impinged in this groove. And in some patients, I, I had to take out not the ligament, but to take out the bone. So I think conservative treatment, whatever, it, it's quite complicated. And in, in that situations, after injection, and if the pain goes out, then of course endoscopic release is, is quite, uh, is really ef ef efficient for those overhead athletes, just to cut the, the ligament where the, the nerve goes and, and they release the symptoms. As I told, sometimes I find the bony bridge, not the, the ligament here. Another problem the overhead athletes has, the arthritis in the distal part of the clavicle. This is quite often situation also, and um, in most situations this could be uh, treated not operatively, but sometimes if the problem is quite big, there are inflammation around the rotator cuff because this is closed structures and the diagnostic sometimes is also complicated. The only way to take part out of the, cro of the clavicle and uh, to that uh, clavicle will not contact the chromion and then they are able quite soon go back to the overhead activities. And at the end I will show some clinical situations uh, talking about the shoulder. The most difficult uh, situation is with instability. The rotator cuff, uh, distal clavicle, suprascapular nerve, is not so so difficult uh, to treat if we get some quite big problem, but the instability is, is, is really difficult and these athletes want to be back and, and sometimes we do mistake uh, treating them. Okay, 21 year male had six traumatic dislocations of the humerus then followed with 40 recurrences. Uh, clinical investigation, positive instability test, no glenoid defects, so no bony defects. It seems that this is not chronic shoulder. Uh, on X-ray, not big defect in the humerus where this part during dislocation goes, goes here. Uh, this is endoscopic view and, and uh, this is on track, so no substantial bony defect that the humeral head goes out of the, of the shoulder. But uh, in this situation, the soft tissue in my hands is, is mistake, soft tissue, uh, just fixation, and the only way is, is to do transposition of, of the bony, of the bone, of the coracoid here, and, and to, to increase this, uh, this volume of the shoulder. 
at the beginning it looked that this is not possible to go back in our head after this type of operation. Yes, uh, they lose a little bit uh, external rotation of five degrees, but anyway, the shoulder is stable and, and they are, they are it, it is a possibility to, to go back and to, to protect the joint from the further arthritis. Another clinical case, 17 years old, female swimmer, swimmer, three recurrences. She used to be professional and she is also hyperlax. I am afraid about this type of patients. Being younger, I, I was a little bit more brave to doing some surgeries, but I will show you this history. And uh, I did arthroscopy. I found healthy shoulder, no ligament tears, everything correct with, with, with cartilage, no bony defects, but she has dis three dislocations, was not able to continue his professional swimming. So we did so-called plication. We, we did some, okay, correction of the, of the ligaments. We tried to, to, to put them closer to, to make the shoulder more stable. But after one year, she dislocated again the same, same shoulder. Of course, she stopped the swimming. And after two dislocations, she got the bony defect. And then she got a transposition of the, of the, of the bone, so-called lethargy procedure. So in that situation, if we, if we have hyperlax patients, we're not supposed to do the soft tissue procedures just to do, to do more sophisticated procedures. And after one year, she dislocated another shoulder. So almost the same like with ACL. If, if the athletes have torn one knee ACL, they have a risk another, especially in the hyperlux. And she got lethargy. Of course, she's not more professional, but she has stable shoulders. Okay, and the last uh, patient, uh, 12 dislocations with bony defect in the humerus and bony defect in the glenoid. Of course, now we learn that we do bony, bony procedures. And uh, what is, what I see that in, in that situation, because this is quite difficult procedure and, 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 and uh, the mistake to do the soft tissue, just I wanted to show that if you get the patients with soft tissue procedures after, after dislocation, you have to, to a little bit to, to be aware what kind of procedure is done. Okay, and, and my take home message that uh, of course better to avoid than to treat and prevention, prevention, prevention. This is quite difficult to do. And we heard from two previous uh, presenters that there are quite powerful tools for everything, but quite difficult way to do it, but th there is way to, to do it. And, and, but sometimes, of course, if you have the CV injury, you have to do, to do uh, the treatment accordingly to pathology. And, that's my last slide, and, and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation, and now it's the time for the questions. Who wants to ask or, okay. I want to ask about the bracing timings. Uh, so uh, what are timings you advise to wear a brace or a splint for a patient if there is a rotator cuff tear? Also, if it is a labrum tear, does it differ? And does it differ on suturing techniques if it's one row stitching or double row stitching? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Perfect question. Are you a surgeon? 
<laughs> no, okay. Okay, after rotator cuff, of course, surgery, it depends on the what, uh, what kind of rotator cuff. If, if it's not massive, not big, and if we're able to put it back, suture without the tension, no need for the brace. I advise the patient just, just go this, just to avoid abduction, rotation for six to eight weeks active. Start with a passive range of motion. They're able to do this. And no evidence, we're discussing in our department, okay, some of my colleagues use a brace, some using this kind of bra brace and da, da, da. but uh, I, I was not able to find the evidence is it important for the rotator cuff when, when you fix them without the tension. Another situation and story, if, if you fix the rotator cuff, massive rotator cuff, Cuff with fatty degeneration. If you do transposition of the latissimus, then you should put the brace in this situation for six weeks, weeks, which is uncomfortable for the patient. If we just fix the two or three rotator cuffs massive, then I put the brace in this situation for four weeks, but I allow them to do passive range of motion next day without rotating, but they need the brace. After instability, if, if we do soft tissue repair, what, what, uh, which is uh, um, surprise comparing with, with bony procedure, after bony procedure, no need for brace. You fix the coracoid, if, if you fix it stable, uh, the inventor um, of the endoscopic technique, uh, uh, Professor Laurent Lafosse, Thomas knows him, uh, he's showman at the same time, and when he started, maybe 10 years ago, we learned from him, he showed the video uh, that 10 days after the uh, transposition of the coracoid and fixation, he asked the patient stand on the, on the hands. So <laughs> no need for brace, but of course you should be, uh, okay, I saw this video, I asked one my patient to do the same, but I never, never ask again it, because <laughs> <laughs> better to, to keep the brace for three weeks you can allow them to do like this. Uh, when you take out the stitches, they can improve uh, rehabilitation quite fast. If you do soft tissue operation, you should wear the brace for six to eight weeks. You get stiff shoulder, then it takes time to regain f full range of motion. So the rehabilitation of the soft tissue is much more complicated comparing to, 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 to bone procedure. Okay, yeah, we have more questions. I'm afraid. You, you as us? I wonder, with the shoulder, you talked about laxity yeah. as a risk factor. Yeah. How much does the technique of a swimmer or a thrower yeah. factor in as a risk factor for, for yeah. all of these types of injuries? Yeah. Yes. Yes, hyperlaxity is, is really complicated situation. And uh, the best solution is to send this patient to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> because anyway, you get trouble. I show this swimmer, she stopped, of course, being professional. I'm not sure if, if I did mistake uh, uh, fixing soft tissue, not doing the bony procedure. Yes, the technique depends on the laxity, of course. Uh, now there are, okay, it's surprising for me in the prevention how fast it's improving. I thought, okay, I'm a surgeon, I learned my technique, it will be okay for 10 years. No, every year is changing. And for the hyperlax patients also, there are some many techniques to fix it, to fix uh, infraspinato, so-called remplissage technique, as a, as a, I don't know, techniques to just to, uh, to fix hyperlaxity, to do more stiff shoulder. But it's no answer, no evidence, many, many suggestions, it's quite difficult. 
what uh, I attended one physiotherapy congress, unfortunately, and I saw there that, okay, almost epidemiologists did the study, evidence, and they told, I'm sorry, osteotomy, high tibial osteotomy, the operation you got, this is just, um, okay, this is just psychological effect, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, total knees are just psychological effect, okay. <laughs> Every shoulder procedure, just psychological effect. So I never go back to any physiotherapist congress. So hyperlax patient, if I, I was not able to tell in the audience that, that I'm a surgeon, I was sitting like this because they told, no surgery, if you, if you do surgery, we will kill you. So I was, I was hiding myself. So hyperlax is, I think that prevention program should work and I'm, I'm sure that they are working, but, but Thomas, you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you addressed the hyperlaxity because I think the same in the knee. Yeah. Well, I think you have, we have, you have the normal statistic that 90% are behaving like this. And then I say to the right and to the left, you have 5% and you got the, the uh, hyperlax, which is, which is a big problem, which we will never solve because yeah. if you can extend, you want to fix it or fixate it in, in zero degrees or maybe 10 degrees, but they overextend. Yeah. So it will be loose again. Yes. And I think so does just the same. You. So whatever kind of yeah. technique also with training yeah. you use, I mean, yeah, this is a problem. Because something in genetic level and we were not Well, the other, the other problem is, or, or the other side, the other 5% are the over-constrained people. Mm. The very rich, rigid people who have this intrinsic stability where you usually do not need any surgery whatsoever. But the hyperlax, I totally agree. Please go and see another doctor. Yeah, yeah. So but, it but might be nice if if patient comes in and you yeah. could ask a couple of questions. Oh, your hyperlax? No, we don't do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have one provocation okay. question for okay. you. <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, as I know, you're still playing basketball with Lymonas and yeah, yeah. other doctors. It's a mistake, but... So I from physio, physiotherapist's uh, side, I would like you to ask, do you do any warm-up before the mm -hmm. matches? Besides, you have you had some dislocations of the shoulder and... Yeah, <laughs> but jo Joseph sitting here, he, he will not believe me. But, but after I got dislocations, yes, I do it. And even I prepare, I have, okay, I'm not able to sleep on my shoulder, so I have to take care about it, okay, to, to, to walk with the, with the weights and something. If I do this, everything is okay, but if I stop to do this, I'm not able to, to, to play, and then Lymonas maybe saw that when I dislocated during the, the, the game, I lay down on the, on the table, I, I, I did reposition, which is also a mistake, because you have to do this is in anesthesia, because other way you will, Thomas looking at me, and then. <laughs> so yes, you, if, if you, but uh, still, what, what is surprisingly for me, okay, I'm an experiment on myself without surgery, with instability, but the patient come to me, I, I never do when the way I do with myself. But you know, it's, uh, I, I know the patients after first time dislocation or only after four dislocation, they continue their career, but they, pay attention a lot of the shoulder, of on everything, and it is possible to, to compensate. So kinesiotherapy is a powerful tool, maybe more powerful than surgery, unfortunately. So they can control. I don't know what will happen after 10, 20 years. Arthritis will happen, but maybe you will be 70 years old, so total shoulder is a good solution. It will help for 10 years, it will be okay. 
Thank I you. don't know. Okay, I know that there are some some physios here uh, which are listening to the presentation, and just one point which which was uh, quite important for me starting the working with the shoulders was uh, the overhead athlete, the instability, and uh, do we need to push on the range of motion, especially to the full external rotation? Because we as a physios, it was told that, okay, mm -hmm. the main goal is first of all to restore the full range of motion and then work on power and then, mm -hmm. and then do the functional rehab and so on and so on. But what about the external rotation of the overhead athlete for throwing mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of deficit uh, can be normal according to you, according to biomechanics? Yeah, it's it's really difficult point. You know, these athletes overhead, they have, during their career with dominant hand, they increased external rotation because to increase the result, you should do it, okay? To increase ex the strength of external rotation and range of motion. If you compare though, dominant time and not dominant, it will be like this. So, uh, but uh, together with increased external rotation, especially in abduction, they get increased risk to tear the biceps and to get rotator cuff tear. So where there is the balance, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. They always want to increase with the results. So this is the matter now I have idea after listening to my friends how to communicate with the coaches, but this is okay, consuming time consuming, I don't know, we have to have a team, we have to have a research assistants, maybe three, epidemiologist maybe <laughs> 10 and then so on so on and and to to discuss and because if they lose external rotation they compensate with the elbow they get the uh, epicondylitis they get the instability of the elbow they get the wrist problems and so on and so on it is quite difficult to control every case is, is really difficult and they are Yes, to answer in correcting just shortly to your, to your question, uh, they are sensitive to lose every degree of external rotation. But is it safer for them to, to avoid these problems? I don't know. They get more risk, but their results are decreasing. And in, in javelin especially, because they have the, the quite uh, good ways in javelin, uh, I, I, I know two athletes, they had dislocations. One athlete had three operations and another athlete lost external rotation. The shoulder was stable, but results were decreasing. So they, they were not happy. Uh, another javelin thrower uh, had problems with the shoulder. Uh, we did kinesiotherapy and we tried to avoid a little bit of external rotation. He dislocated the elbow and he torn the medial ligament. So this is really complicated situation and then no one answer for that question. Okay, so Joseph, maybe you, you, you can agree with me, but I heard that uh, in USA, uh, you have such a exact amount of, uh, of pitchers per year, which should be, that should be strictly followed in order to avoid uh, these shoulder problems, I know two, three thousand some number. If the kid is performing this kind of until that point, so it's okay. If it is much more, so you are having higher risk to to have the injury. So we are coming to the exact number of points, uh, but maybe it was epidemiology study. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the baseball is, is good sport, so we are not happy. The baseball is not popular here in, in our country. So, yeah. so Please bring the baseball to Lithuania yeah. and we will have more shoulder injuries. <laughs> okay, so if we don't have uh, any other questions, so thanks for, for the questions and for all, for all the participating here in the first day.